on, guys? Nick Lessigore here. Brandon Delacay. Exit 12. Brewery. In the basement. Yes, sir. And we're here with a first taste. We haven't done one of these in a while. No, it's been a little bit. Life has gotten in the way, but not today. Nope. We have uh, the Progress 71, we ended up calling it, which is hopefully uh, are eventually going to be our series of like house IPAs in a way. <laughs> um, once we get everything down, we need to work out some kinks with this, but um, this beer was featured in our latest brew day. Yep. And uh, we had Citra and Medusa hops that we put in it. Yep. And we, it's basically a West Coast style. So uh, I just poured this off the tap. Brandon uh, has a little bit better of a head than me, but yeah. Take a little peek. It is a little more cloudy than we wanted. Uh, yeah, we thought it might be chill haze, but it's not looking like chill haze. The maybe. bubbles rising up quickly, which is nice. Uh, it probably, yeah, I was thinking it was the chill haze. It's probably not. This is just, uh, you know, it haze is in our blood. We just <laughs> end is. up making hazy beers, even if we don't really want to. We did, uh, we did um, kettle find this with, I think, two two teaspoons of. Uh, with Irish moss. I think we went a little heavy on it. Uh, we didn't use any gelatin. We thought that was gonna be good enough. We did dry hop this beer, so you know, maybe next time we do a gelatin or or even a warflock, you know, and uh Irish moss, we were thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and uh we cold crashed it for about two or three days. Yep. Um so let's as you can see, uh it is it does have those nice caramel hues to it. Uh, I think at first glance, if you're looking at it from here and us not walking up to the camera, it may look oxidized. It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, we also closed transferred this utilizing the SS Brew Tech in a video that, if it's not out already, will be shortly. Yeah. And uh, so it's not oxidized. It's got a really nice, almost a uh, little bit uh, darker cranberry to it. Uh, if you yeah. hold it up to the light. It actually uh, kind of looks, it's slightly darker than our friends giving Cranberry Pale Ale that mm -hmm. we did, the second version. Yeah. Um, but it's really got some nice caramel hues to it. It's got some copper, some, some light gold in there as well. And uh, the bubbles, tiny bubbles really shooting up nicely. Yeah, we definitely wanted that. Um, we wanted something a little darker, a little amber, like a, a really, really dark golden, um, golden orange. Um, a lot different than normally what we do. Everything we normally do is pretty light, so this is a little different. We use caramel, we use crystal malts about twice a year. Yeah. So this is one of two. Um, <laughs> we probably went a little heavy on the crystal, I think we'd agree. Sure. And so we'll edit the recipe moving forward. But for now, uh, we have this in front of us. Let's, uh, let's get a smelly smeller on this thing. Or known as a nose on it. Let's nose this. <laughs> so off the bat i'm definitely getting that that malt backbone a little caramel um see i get some really nice peach some okay. really really ripe been sitting in the sun like kissed with the sun type type Ooh. peach like that really nice warm peach uh aspect to it i also get like a very slight hint of grapefruit Yes, yeah, so on the back end. Grapefruit. Yeah, grapefruit, um, maybe a little lemon. I'm definitely getting a, also a clean uh, yeast character, like, a, um, you know, like, um, I don't want to say a little bready or doughy, but it's definitely like a little bit of that yeast character is coming. Uh, coming Farmhousey almost? A little bit, a little bit. We did use the Kvik, uh, the Kvik strain, the Opshog strain of uh, the Kvik yep. blend of yeast, which is, uh, we got from a small batch company called um, Man Maniacal, Maniacal Yeast. Yep, Maniacal Yeast. Um, which was different for us. It wasn't in the Beersmith software or anything, so we had to kind of use something to substitute. It was our first time using a yeast that was is fairly unknown and it sold out very quick online, so yeah. Brandon snagged it up. Yeah, and um, I think it's the first time we've used uh, dry Kvik. Um, I think everything else we've had is a slurry, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, it, it was pretty good. We we did about half half the half the pouch. It was um, like one. It was 0.9 grams. 0.9 grams, which some people might be like, "Oh, that's even too much," and I and that probably wouldn't surprise us either. Um, but you know, it was, but it the right. the rest, sorry, the packet said to use all use it all. Yeah, it was said it was a five gallon um, thing, but everybody says under pitch, so we 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 split the difference there. You know, 
I, I do get some maybe malt sweetness on the back end of, of the nose, but for me, this is fruit and it's uh, stone fruit. I, I don't get a whole lot of tropical. I get I get some really nice stone fruit flavors on it, like the peach, possibly the like a plum almost as well, like yeah. a like a really nice uh, danker kind of sweetness. And then on the back end, you get that really nice malt character, that really nice like uh, almost like a and I say this quite often, but like a stone fruit dipped in liquid malt. Yeah. You know, it's as if uh, you took a, a peach, you didn't even cut it, you just dipped it in liquid malt and took yeah. a bite out of it, almost like a candy apple. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely, um, I think that would be the, um, the Medusa, if I'm not mistaken, because it's definitely, uh, I'm definitely selling the Medusa over the Citra. We did use, uh, Warrior, I believe, for, for, uh, bittering, but you're probably not going to get much off that because it was a 60 minute light edition, just a slight bittering hop. So it's just going to add some bitterness. Yeah. So, uh, I think we've talked enough about this. It's time to drink. So cheers. Cheers. Salute. Cheers. Yeah, so it's definitely got that that nice bitterness. Um, it's pretty clean. I think that we probably would even want it a little crisper and drier next time. So that's something we could probably research. Um, I think it's tough to do that. I do agree. I think it could be crisper. It could be drier. The cleanliness that you mentioned, I didn't really get until you just mentioned it. I've, I've been sipping on this for a few days. So this isn't my first, my first beer, but this is his first beer. And I think... Mm -hmm. That's a great point. I, I didn't really realize it is cleaner than what we normally would brew. Yeah. So for the style, I think we na nailed the, the clean aspect sure. of it. It gets well brewed. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's definitely got that bitterness charge at the front end. Um, and, it, and it rounds off nicely with some hop flavors. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the hop flavors. I'm not getting as much of the Citra as probably the Medusa. I think we even... If I'm not mistaken, I think it was pretty much 50-50. It was. Three yeah. ounces and three ounces. Three ounces and three ounces. So that might be something we play with, you know, if we want more of those tropical notes. But, but I mean, for this style, uh, a little bit more earthy and a little bit more uh, bitterness plays. So so it's not something that is I'm overly concerned about with this style. And it also is very cold. We did. I, I literally poured my glass and then his glass and I pressed record. I mean, so yeah. it's... A little tough to pull flavors out of it right now, but what I do get is a lot of grapefruit pith. Like yeah. I get, I get that really, and I think the grapefruit aspect of of the the hops kind of plays really well with the with the sweetness and the bitterness, specifically the bitterness, because I think when you think grapefruit pith, you think like overly bitter. Yeah, and so I think it plays really well with that aspect. I also get like very light hints of strawberry. Um, sure. which I think is interesting. Yeah. And I, and I'm still, you know, it is a little green. Um, I feel like we did a good job of dropping a lot of the particulates out, which can, uh, help with that. So, uh, I think that it is still pretty green. So maybe we're getting some of those, those hot polyphenols right now that might drop out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely got that, um, like you said, that stone fruit that, uh, you know, um, a little bit of the grapefruit as well. Yeah. And I think... I when I first had this I told him that I felt like and this is why I don't like telling him about beers I think it's a sensory thing but we brew them together so I understand him wanting to know I, this is probably my fourth or fifth pint and I think I don't get the same polyphenols that I got in the beginning but again I've been sipping on this for about five days yep. this is your first try sure. so I think three or four more pints you may not perceive those flavors yep. but and I think that's something that, um, you know, me and him probably don't talk about in the videos all that much, but we definitely, you know, we, we do a lot of IPAs, we do a lot of hoppy beers, and when you're heavily whirlpooling and dry hopping, you're getting a lot of those polyphenols in the beer, and, and until they drop out of suspension, and, and, you know, especially if you're not filtering, we do filter, but um, you can absolutely get a lot of that, like, medicinal sort of band-aid flavors and it's something we've been fighting a lot um and i'm pretty sure we just bought a piece of equipment that we're hoping is going to help you with that i'm sure we'll uh show it if we haven't already talked about it have we already talked about it no okay but we'll we will about soon uh this video has probably already gone on long enough yeah uh we want to get into what kind of we have coming up but uh it's it just Forget it. We're gonna brew. <laughs> Forget it. We're gonna brew. We'll this, just we'll pull out, put out more videos. Right. Videos on videos. Content machines. 
So stacks on stacks. That's right. Until next time. Of videos. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>